Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good this evening. So, a lot of people wanted me to hit on this situation. Once again, concerning Gilbert Arenas, okay? So if you guys do not know, he's been going viral over the last few days for his commentary that he gave against the Sudanese team who played against Team USA recently in the Olympics. And the game was very, very close. And of course, you know, LeBron was there to save the day. And Gilbert Arenas wanted to basically provide his commentary on the situation and his commentary was not taken well by many people. So I want you guys to go ahead and hear what Gilbert Arenas had to say. We lost to them. We almost lost. Come on, man. And the king had to save. The king had to save us. I know the LeBron haters are mad. <laughs> he did it again. <laughs> We almost lost to the <laughs> to the the the, the Ahi, Ahi tribe. This is crazy. What is going on, man? Embiid over there, goddamn throwing the game. He throwing the game for his cousins and shit. What's what's this is? I, I I don't even know where to find the box score. <laughs> I don't even. We went in on layups at the end of the game. Like, what is the box? I don't know where the box score is. I already have my excuses. <laughs> I already have my, my excuses. Ah, oh, this just preseason. We still trying to figure out lineup. But, but the, God, come on, y'all. We aren't supposed to. <laughs> we don't supposed to be losing to air up there. <laughs> Come on, man. Cool runnings. We don't supposed to lose to the cool runnings team. That's the last team we supposed to lose to or be close with. They don't even have shoes. They get their shoes from America. We got to ship them shoes. They, they had to use the shoes that we have an extra leftover shoe. They use leftover shoes that the USA teams didn't want. Like, all right, y'all, y'all can use these. They don't. They didn't. Even, they don't even have basketball ribs, dog. <laughs> I, I seen. I seen uh, Matumbo's. Was it Matumbo's? No, Bo's father, Manubo. I seen he had to walk what an hour and a half to go shoot basketball. 25 miles for a basketball rim. That is crazy. We lose it to people who don't even, they got baskets in the back. They they shooting on fucking peach baskets in dirt, no shoes. Man, they damn near almost took us. Almost, man. Shit, right there, that's, that's the goal for them. That was the goal for them. They got no indoor court, nothing. They don't have nothing. I'm pretty sure that they're going to have the. there's going to be some meetings. They got to be some meetings after this. And it's going to have to be some real, real reality checks. Like, come on, man. We can't lose to them, man. I mean, some of them I noticed. I noticed some of them, the, the guys who was on the team. Like, them to feed the children, motherfuckers, man. $5 a day. Them. That was, yeah, flies all in their face, stomach all out. Them. That too. We done helped them. We done helped those guys, man. That's crazy. Now they coming back trying to take the gold from us. Feed the church. Send wheat, send water and bread. Them. Them. That's who we almost lost to. Y'all are crook. Ah, man. This is getting. <sighs> God damn. Woo shit. Oh, Lord Jesus. God. Boy. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, 
Hey man, I don't listen. I don't listen. Damn. Hey, listen. <laughs> I'ma just be honest with you. Like, they shouldn't have black jerseys on. They should just let that color go. Cause ain't nothing. <laughs> I thought this shit was in black and white. <laughs> I thought this was in black and white. All right, so you guys just heard what Gilbert Arenas had to say, and his comments were disgusting. His commentary was not funny in the least. It was very racist and xenophobic. And before you guys say, oh, he's just joking, he's just having some fun, if this was a white sports commentator, if this was Max Killerman, if this was Skip Bayless, if this was anybody else who decided to quote unquote joke like this, they'd be fired instantly from ESPN or Fox News, okay? They'd have their podcast canceled. But, you know, people want to act like this is supposed to be funny and he's just, you know, telling jokes and he's just roasting. This was not the time and place. You have a lot of young kids who follow the NBA. You have a lot of African kids who love the NBA. And this, to me, was very, very disrespectful, you know, to say that they have to walk for miles to get to practice and that America's sending them shoes. You mean the same Nike shoes that China makes? It's not like these shoes are made here in America. They don't need America to donate them shoes. They have their own shoes. You know, the things that he was saying was just disgusting, saying that they're from the Aki Aki tribe and blowing dust. It's like, this is not funny whatsoever. So they decide to interview Joel Embiid, who is a Cameroonian American basketball player, and he plays for Team USA. And so he was not happy about this at all either. So I want you guys to hear what he had to say about the situation. Uh, obviously, I don't come, uh, I don't come doing it. I'm African, first and foremost. Uh, uh, you know, I might be playing for Team USA, but, you know, I was, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm Cameroonian, you know, first and foremost. So, yeah, I don't know exactly what I said, so I can't comment on it, but, you know, if it was not negative, uh, it's just disappointing. Uh, you know, because you see what, you know, you know, African basketball has done, you know, for us to be in this position, you know, to be able to make some sort of impact. Um, even in the position that I am, you know, I still have a lot of impact, you know, where I'm from in the whole continent of Africa, and that's never going to stop. So, um, like I said, it's really unfortunate, and uh, especially in the world we live in now, like, you know, and, you know so much negativity. And, uh, All right, so you guys just heard what Joel said about the situation. You know, it's just really sad and disgusting. On top of that, Rob Parker from Fox Sports Radio also went in on the situation as well. So I want y'all to hear what Rob Parker had to say. Gilbert Arenas, let's call him ignorant. The words, Martin, are hateful, racist to all Africans. Why in the world would you attack them? What did they do wrong that you would want to chastise them and make fun of their existence and how they've done things. If, if you're Gilbert Arenas uh, and your alma mater wants to invite you to something, Martin, or the sure, NBA Arizona. wants to, how, how in the world could Arizona invite Gilbert Arenas to anything? What what would you be in inviting him to after those kind of comments? Nothing. Is that really where you want to go? It's mean spirited. It's hurtful. There's just so many things that are wrong with this. Really? That's your comedy act? That's how you think you want to make fun of the Africans who put on a ball game, Martin, because the U.S. let them stay in the game? All right, so you guys just heard what Rob Parker had to say about the situation, so he was definitely upset. Now, let me say this. What I find very interesting about all of this is that a lot of people are up in arms now. But if you guys remember, if you guys are true tea sippers and you've been here for a while, um, I called out Gilbert Arenas over six years ago for the disrespect that he was given to Lupita Nyong'o. He had disrespected her not once but twice, was going in on her skin tone, talking about how dark she was, all you can see is her teeth. He was being so disrespectful and I lit his ass up. I made this video over six years ago. It has 1.3 million views. I'll put the link down below so y'all can check it out. But in that video, I called him out. And I also said, I find it very funny that none of these so-called woke men are coming to Lupita's defense. 
But if it was anybody else, you know, if they were light skinned or racially ambiguous, they would check him. Now, years later, he tried to call himself apologizing for what he said to Lupita and she completely ignored him as she should have. So anybody acting shocked by what Gilbert Arenas says has not been paying attention. This man has been colorist. This man has been xenophobic. But see, when he was doing it towards a black woman, it was dismissed. It was, you know, only people who spoke up were other black women. But now that he's disrespecting a bunch of black men, now it's a conversation. Now everybody's weighing in when his ass should have been checked years ago because this behavior is not cool and it's not okay. You know, you can have your commentary without disrespecting somebody's ethnicity, somebody's culture, and then the fact that you're perpetuating all types of stereotypes. It'd be no different than if somebody was perpetuating stereotypes about African Americans. You know what I'm saying? Not all African Americans live in the hood, sell drugs, kill each other. That is a negative stereotype. And I know many people who do not fall into that box. So we need to stop pushing these ignorant stereotypes about African people and African Americans because all it does is cause a greater divide. So Gilbert Arena should definitely be very ashamed of himself for that. Now, in other news, I also got to get on Candace, okay? So you guys know I'm no fan of Candace because like I said, she's very wishy-washy in her stance. Well, now Candace is once again going viral because she's basically chose to talk about the situation concerning Sonia Massey, the black woman who was killed yesterday by the cops. And so a lot of people are dragging Candace because she's saying that basically this is more or less Joe Biden's fault, this is more race baiting, and that cops make mistakes. So let's go ahead and watch what Candace had to say. Of course, as I have said since the beginning of time, there are mistakes that have hu- police officers are human beings. There are mistakes that happen. And the idea that now you're going to use this situation and all the usual suspects are already involved. We know that attorney Crump is already involved to then try to make black Americans believe that this happened simply because she was black is pointedly ridiculous. So I am saying to black Americans today, do not take this bait. Yes, what happened in this situation, I think he's going to have a very hard time, this officer, saying that he absolutely felt so threatened by boiling water that the only solution was for him to mindfully say, I'm going to shoot you in the face, and that's what he did. I think that that is is going to be a very steep hill to climb. But the reaction from black America cannot be exactly what they want. There is a reason that whoever is in control of Joe Biden's account instantly tweeted about this, okay? It's because they think we're stupid. They think we're emotional. They think that we always respond illogically and emotionally, and that it's an easy way for them to shore up votes by saying, oh, look, forget that we've destroyed everything around you and that we got you to burn down your neighborhoods, um, you know, burn down your neighborhoods in 2020, And then obviously stole a bunch of money because none of that money actually went to making your neighborhoods better. And so now those communities are desolate. Forget all of that because look, look, another video. And this means racism is back and vote for us because we're going to show you how emotional we are. And that's exactly what Joe Biden did. He tweeted this on the heels. He wrote, Sonia Massey, a beloved mother, friend, daughter, and young black woman should be alive today. Sonia's death at the hands of a police officer reminds us that all too often black Americans face fears for their safety in ways many of the rest of us do not. Sonia's family deserves justice. I am heartbroken for her children and family as they face this unthinkable and sensible, senseless loss. Jill and I mourn with the rest of the country and our prayers are with Sonia's families, loved ones and community during this devastating time. Okay, again, going to say here, this, this happened in Springfield, Illinois, that the only reason whoever is in control of his account is putting that out there is because too many black Americans are turning toward Trump. They think too many black Americans are catching on to the Democrat scan. And so, scam, pardon. And so they scan every one of these situations and they leave out the hard facts. And the hard facts are that if you examine this just based on a percentage rate, white Americans unarmed are more likely to be shot and killed by police officers in mistakes, shot and killed by police officers in these correspondences than black Americans. That is a fact. It is an inescapable fact. There's no way to examine the statistics and not come out with that understanding. Okay. And they don't want you to know that. There's never been a time ever on his timeline where he has shared anything about a white person being killed unarmed by a police officer because it doesn't feed their narrative. So stand up to this, okay? And all you have to do is be mentally forthright. Do not fall for the scam. Do not run out of your house. Do not burn down your neighborhood in Springfield, Massachusetts. Instead, demand that Joe Biden make an appearance and let us know who has been in control of the White House all this time. Because that is what this is supposed to be. This is supposed to be a red airing. All right, so you guys just heard Candace's rant. Now, I will say this. 
it is interesting that this is now coming out. We have a presidential debate coming up. Um, you know, anytime something happens with black people and the police, it does cause a lot of emotion, a lot of hurt. But with that being said, this is not a Joe Biden issue. Okay. When I watched that video, Joe Biden wasn't in the room. The only people in the room were two police officers, two white police officers, and a woman named Sonia Massey who called for help. And a demon was in that room as well, I swear. But with that being said, there's just way too many excuses that, that Candace is trying to make with this situation. What we do know about this officer is his name is Sean Grayson. He's 30 years old. And he has been in trouble several times um, with different departments. He's been pulled over for DUI. So he doesn't have a good character. If that was a white woman who was in the kitchen messing with the pot, he would not have responded in the same manner, in the same manner that he responded to Sonia. And that is the issue. The who shot Sonia Massey worked for multiple departments in the state of Illinois in just a handful of years. Senior investigative reporter Paula Vassan delves into how law enforcement officers in the state of Illinois are tracked. Paula. Well, legal experts tell us the state of Illinois has something Missouri does not have, a way to search for police officers to check their work history. It shows former sheriff's deputy, Sean Grayson, worked for six different agencies in the state of Illinois in just four years. But the public website does not show the full picture, revealing hired and separation dates without explanation. State records show 30-year-old Grayson hopped around as a part-time officer at three small departments. He had a full-time job at a fourth department and worked at two sheriff's offices, all of his jobs in central Illinois. We've also discovered he had two misdemeanor DWI convictions in McGoopin County. The I-team is working to find out what's being done in the state to prevent officers with potentially bad track records from bouncing around. Industry sources tell us it's the responsibility of the Illinois Law Enforcement Training and Standards Board to allow an officer to be hired somewhere else. The I-team has reached out to that board for an explanation into how Grayson kept getting hired. Take the politics out of it, take George Floyd and the riots and all that stuff out of it and get down to the human aspect. The human aspect is this woman simply said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And his response was, you better shut the fuck up before I shoot you in the head. She does not speak about this woman saying, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. She doesn't talk about the demons that's in that cop. She just sways whichever way the wind blows. And that's all I get from her. Again, take the politics out of it. Wrong is wrong and right is right. And at the end of the day, this cop was wrong. He was wrong for the way that he treated, he was wrong from the time he got there, the way that he treated the situation, the way that he spoke to the woman, and then he killed her in cold blood. Let's also forget the fact that's not a mistake, Miss Candace, is the fact that the police department lied. They try to cover it up and say that, oh, the intruder shot her. Then they change it to it was a self-inflicted gunshot wound. So missing with the whole police officers make mistakes. Yes, anybody can make a mistake. We're all human. People make mistakes. But this was not a mistake. Not only was this a cold-blooded murder, this was a cover-up. And you did not one time hit on that. Police radio traffic I obtained from the night of Sonia Massey's murder shows that someone on scene that night, what sounds like a deputy, saying that her wound was, quote, self-inflicted. Listen here. Just confirm self-inflicted. Two on half. Happy County's update. I didn't. Self-inflicted. Okay, thank you. Now, this is in line with what the family says was an attempted cover-up because on the night of her death, family was told by deputies at the hospital that Sonia's wound was self-inflicted, that she had killed herself, or that maybe an intruder had actually killed her. But at no point was the family told that a deputy was responsible for killing Sonia Massey. All you did was make this more of a political issue, so you, ma'am, are full of shit, just like Gilbert Arenas. Good day. All right, tea sippers, I'm out. I want to hear from y'all. Let me know your thoughts on both of these stories. How do y'all feel about Gilbert Arenas and what he had to say? And how do you guys feel about Candace Owens and her rant about Joe Biden concerning the Sonia Massey case? Leave a comment down below. I look forward to reading y'all's comments. I'll talk to y'all later. Have a good night. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family.